the revolution is real, it's live, and as some comrades say, it's lit, right? <laughs> lit, lit. Comrades, and welcome to a special live broadcast of the Omali Taught Me Study, live with the leader of the African Nation, Chairman Omali Ishitela. My name is Akile Anai, the Director of Agitation and Propaganda for the African People's Socialist Party, as well as your MC for this evening. Today's episode is themed Fight for Anti-Colonial Free Speech, Support Black Power 96 FM Radio. Every February, Black Power 96.3 FM Radio, a project of the African People's Education and Defense Fund, conducts one of its annual member drives to win support from listeners like you to make one-time or recurring donations to keep your favorite station on the air. Black Power 96 is honored to have as part of our regular programming, the Omali Taught Me Study, normally aired live on Sundays from 10 a.m. to 12 noon Eastern. This brings the groundbreaking teachings and leadership of Chairman Amalia Shatella to the immediate community in which the station is housed, as well as our listeners tuned in across the globe via our Black Power 96 mobile app, which you can download today. In this episode, we call on the Omali Taught Me supporters to donate to your favorite show and help us meet $2,000 of the station's overall $10,000 goal for the month of February. There is no other station quite like Black Power 96, which has the mission statement, not just explaining the world, but changing it. This means we take active measures to help transform the lives and conditions of the African community by providing unique services and opportunities for our people. We are a vehicle for cultural workers to explore their talent, a training base for our next generation's engineers. We are a communication lifeline for our entire people and above else, we serve as an institution that amplifies and distributes the dreams and aspirations of our nation. Black Power 96 is the place where your free speech can be exercised, where African people have the ability to call out colonialism in our everyday lives through gentrification, poverty, police containment, healthcare, and so much more. We can talk about it, criticize it, come together and organize around it with our very own radio station. Our mission, vision and practical work to see it through explains why on July 29th of 2022, with the FBI attacks made on the African People's Socialist Party and Chairman Amalia Shatella, why Black Power 96 was one of APEDF's institutions targeted by the colonial state. With this government assault on the Uhuru movement and its clear intent to take away the free speech rights, not just of the Uhuru Three, Chairman Omali, African People's Solidarity Committee Chairwoman Penny Hess, and Uhuru Solidarity Movement Chair Jesse Neville, but of everyone, it makes sense that they would also have to attack the vehicles for which our freedom of speech can be exercised. 
Part of the government's assaults appeared in the form of economic sanctions against APEDF's institutions by forced closure of bank accounts and the theft of previously awarded grant funding amounted over $100,000 to APEDF and Black Power 96 by the local Pinellas County Commission located in St. Petersburg, Florida. You can be part of fighting back against this assault defending anti-colonial free speech by supporting Black Power 96 Radio today. Again, the O'Malley Taught Me show has a goal to raise $2,000 this evening. And at any point throughout this program, you can donate to blackpower96.org slash donate or via cash app to dollar sign Black Power 96. But don't just take our word for it. Hear testimonials from community members and artists as to why they support Black Power 96 Radio, put together by one of Black Power 96's many dedicated volunteers. Let's take a look. Gerald Austin, this, this performer has been performing for many, many years and a uh, two-time Grammy winner and inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with uh, David and Troy and uh, the Manhattans. And so, Gerald, yeah. hang out with us, okay? You got it. Uh, why do you think people that are watching everywhere should donate to Black Power? You know something? I think they should donate because, is a first of all, you're, it's a positive organization. You're about being and doing and helping our community. You know, and it's, it's very important that we support each other, business-wise, organization-wise, Foundation-wise, we should support our own, mm -hmm. you know, because in supporting our own, we can grow. And um, it's, that's something that's very, very, very important. That's Gerald Austin, two-time Grammy winner uh, and uh, inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Go to blackpower96.org slash donate. That's blackpower96.org slash donate or use our cash app at dollar sign Black Power 96. I, I want to ask you, why do you support Black Power? Oh, it's, it's oh man, that's one of those questions that um, has got so many answers just stupid, that was just thrown at me like, all of a sudden, you know. Um, uh, why do you think well, people first, support Black they, Power yourself? You guys support Black artists. You support your community. Uh, you know, you give, you know, um, the, the people are genuine. I've met most of you guys, you know, it's not just something that you put together that, or where you're trying to uh, make a couple of dollars. You know what I mean? Like I've seen facilities and everything is geared around helping the people grow and giving us a place where we can find support. And that's just not musically, you know, that's food, clothing, shelter, um, exposure, um, you're there for them, you know, standing up for the rights of the people and, um, you know, on all platforms, um, um, politics and, 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 and just, just, you're fighting to help African people get their fair share, you know, and, and that's something that, that, um, uh, I support and that's something that, and that's a, a true reason why I feel most people should support you guys. Well, Definitely. I love you. Yes, this radio station here has been a very big inspiration in my life. Um, I didn't even know it existed until I had heard one of my friends um, release one of their CDs on there, and he was telling me about it. And that's um, uh, Derek the Change Man Smith. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had told me about, you know, whenever you get a chance to get your music together and stuff, you know, go see Blind Eddie, you know, go, go talk to him. And he's on blackpower96.org. And I was like, okay, I'll try it. But I tell you, ever since I have met you, Eddie, and have listened to my music on this radio station, I didn't know it was so broad. It is all over the world. And it has really been big for me. It has encouraged me to keep going. It has encouraged me to never give up no matter what i'm going through um you know we sisters and brothers in the vision world you understand what i'm saying and and this has really taught me that there is nothing too hard for god there is nothing too hard for us to continue to fight and live for our goals and you know our visions and with black power um 96 
96.3 FM radio station has really, really catapulted my career. And I thank God for y'all. Y'all have really been a blessing to me. And in order for it to continue to bless others, we got to keep y'all on the air. Thank you. Thank y'all so much. I want to say this before I go up out of here. Mm -hmm. Thank y'all so much. Florida has got me in, taken me in, showed me so much love. I love you guys for that. Radio station, y'all keep playing my music. I do love that. Thank you so much. I can't say it enough. Yeah, and if you could tell us, you know, why you support and why people should support Black Power 96 Radio, we want to hear it from you. Oh, back to DJ Eddie. He is amazing. When it comes to helping, when it comes to, like, sources, he's the one to reach out to. Um, this station needs to be on the air, period, because you play great music. You help the community all the time. And you do things for the independent artists. There's artists out here that has great talent that's being overlooked. So by you playing there, giving them a chance to be heard and playing their music on air and reaching lots more people, that's a blessing itself because that music can come across someone else's hand. And there it is. So you can make someone famous one day. So... That's a, that's a really, really a blessing, and that's why you guys need to stay on air because you do awesome things for the community. Black yes. Power Radio with Eddie Mosby Jr. My name is Eddie Lee Mosby Sr. For many years, I was the manager of the Florida Spiritual Labs, a group we started out in 1962, and we traveled all over the country doing such songs as If I Could Hear My Mother Pray Again, all of these years, where have the missionaries gone? And many, many more. We traveled north, south, east, and west. North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, Mississippi, California, all over the country, singing God praises. I am so proud of my son, Eddie Morris Jr. Y'all gave me an outlet when certain DJs wouldn't play me. And I was number one on y'all radio station for a couple weeks with Heather Marie with like that. And y'all supported me with open arms like family. And if I get missing or something or whatever, y'all always find a way to contact me. Either kind of way. I don't know. If I get gone or something, y'all be like, come back. Eddie will call me or somebody from the camp at uh, uh, down there where y'all at be calling me like, where you at, Coco? Da -da -da -da. Come get your award. Da -da -da. So I, I really appreciate that. My work get appreciated from y'all. And thank y'all for opening doors for me. But if and I could, just one shout out for you guys at blackpowerradio.org. And I'm going to ask everyone there to help me in congratulating you guys for hosting this event uh, to unify uh, the African uh, community and for the self-determination of the African community. So that being said, we thank you so much. One love. Thank you. Stay safe. I mean, well, so black media, whether it's uh, radio, newspaper, television, and the other multiple digital sources of media that exist is very important to our movement, has been historically and always will be. It's the way in which we sound the trumpet for the culture and help folks to align their ideas and concepts. And so supporting Black media supports that. And to that point, everybody should be supporting our independent voices, wherein, you know, we are determining for ourselves what the messages we want to promote are. Uhuru. Hey, yo. Thanks for supporting Black Power 96. Real music for real people making real revolution. All power to the black community. Uh, African working class stand up. Uhuru. Uhuru. And we salute all of our incredible supporters, these artists, you know, that, I mean, you've heard from, these are artists that have gotten airplay right on the airwaves of Black Car 96 Radio through our local going global program. And, you know, again, just tremendous supporters of Black Car 96 Radio, forces who appreciate and recognize the work and the mission of Black Car 96 and APDF and the broader Uhuru movement. So just really want to uh, shout out 
all of those uh, forces who provided those testimonials. And again, you can join our growing list of supporters by making a contribution at blackpower96.org slash donate via cash app at dollar sign blackpower96 or by check mailed to blackpower96 at 1245 18th Avenue South, St. Petersburg, Florida, 33705. And before we turn it over to the chairman, let's take a look at the give backs for all of our donors. So firstly, Amali Taught Me, as mentioned, is a part of the programming lineup on Black Power 96, Radio 96.3 FM in St. Petersburg, Florida, and streaming online through the Black Power 96 mobile app. Black Power 96 Radio is 100% funded through donations from listeners and supportive businesses in our community. You literally power Black Power 96. And on today's special episode of The Omali Taught Me, we are, we are raising funds for Black Power 96 Radio during our February member drive, an important platform that allows us to study and discuss the struggle for African liberation. So Black Power 96 goal is to raise at least $10,000 in donations this February. The station has raised so far $4,165, which leaves $5,835 remaining. And again, the Omali Taught Me show has a goal to raise $2,000 of that. Your donation today supports keeping Black Power 96 radio on the air. Listener funding means that the Black community has our own radio station. We define the programming. We give opportunities to our community to get experience in audio engineering and other aspects of running a radio station. It's an institution in the hands of our community. And if you don't already listen to Black Power 96 radio, you can tune in on 96.3 FM in St. Petersburg, Florida, or listen from anywhere on blackpower96.org or, or on the free Black Power 96 mobile app available on the App Store or Google Play. So take a moment, download Black Power 96 radio to your phone via Apple or Google Play Store. Make sure you download this app so you can hear Molly Taught Me Sunday Study straight from the Black Power 96 app, uh, radio app and any of the other programming, all of the incredible music, all of the incredible artists you just saw, Download this app and you can have access to that. So again, ways to donate uh, are online at blackpower96.org slash donate. You can also donate via Cash App. You can send that to dollar sign Black Power 96 or write checks to Black Power 96 and mail them to 1245 18th Avenue South, St. Petersburg, Florida, 33705. And we want to let you know about some special thank yous the station is offering when you donate during the February member drive. So everyone who donates will get a pad of custom Black Power 96 sticky notes with Black Power 96 station manager at DJ Eddie Moldsby's. And you saw him just in that video just a moment ago and all of the praise that he received because of the incredible work he does in managing the Black Power 96 radio station and his profound love and commitment to the station and to the people. And so his uh, motivating call that he makes during his morning show is get out that bed. So you will get a get out that bed get out that bed, sticky notepad, um, you know, to, to jot all your important notes down, all your important reminders, all your affirmations, whatever, um, you know, whatever you need to write to remind yourself of, you can have, um, by donating today, all donors will get this custom Black Friday 6 sticky notes pad. Give $100 today or become a monthly sustainer at $10 a month or more. And we want to thank you by sending a Black Power 96 drawstring bag. If you are able to give $200 or more today, we want to thank you with a copy of the chairman's latest book, The Verdict is in Reparations Now. And if you are able to give $300 or more today or start a monthly contribution of $25 a month or more, we want to thank you with a Black Power 96 radio t-shirt. So you get the t-shirt, you get the Reparations Now book, you get the drawstring bag, and you get the Black Power 96 uh, sticky note pad if you're able to give $300 or more um, or today or start a monthly contribution of $25 a month or more. So you get all of this, uh, again, plus your Black Power 96 radio t-shirt. And we wanna recognize some sustaining members of Black Power 96 radio. Our sustaining members, again, are people who give every single month. 
um, a recurring donation. So let me get to our sustaining members. So we have um, our sustaining member, President Matsumela of the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement, who engineers the show Black Power Talk. So we want to salute President Matsumela. We also have African People's Socialist Party Secretary General Mwazi Odom, as well as the Hands Off Uhuru Campaign Chair Mwazi Odom um, as, a, as a sustainer to Black Power 96. And we have our very own Chairman Amalia Shatella as a Black Power 96 sustainer and APEDF President. Ona Zene Ishitella, who gives every single drive. We have MQ in Gainesville, Ka Kasha in St. Petersburg, Florida, Denise in Silver Spring, Maryland, Emmanuel in Silver Spring, Maryland, Sarah C in the UK, Faux Feet in St. Louis, Jamal in Minnesota, Melinda in Toronto, Canada, also with the diasporic music with Jalali, Tracy in Rialto, California, Alikia in Miami, Florida, Robert in St. Petersburg, Florida, Bakery in Oakland, California. We have director Aisha Fields in Huntsville, Alabama, who became a sustaining during this drive in honor of Michelle Strongfields and Stephen Fields. And uh, director Aisha is also the uh, leader director of the All African People's Development and Empowerment Project. We have Mike in Madison, Wisconsin, Sarah in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Jamie, Johan, and Janice in St. Petersburg, Florida, Brendan, Kitty, and Allison in St. Louis, Missouri, Virginia in Indiana, Stephanie in Oakland, California, Renee in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Diane in Gainesville, Florida, and Anne in Ecuador. So again, these supporters give a monthly donation to provide a stable base of funding for the station. And we encourage anyone who is not already a monthly sustainer, consider giving that kind of consistent, reliable support to the station. That's $5, $10, $25 or more a month. And today is, um, oh yeah. So again, $5, $10, $25 or more a month to become a sustainer. And we want to shout out all the supporting members who have already contributed during this drive. There are so many, too many to name. So if you did not hear your name mentioned, we just want you to know that we appreciate every single contribution and they all make a difference. So um, again, comrades, just wanted to show you what you get today when you donate. And we will be shouting out our donors during this program. So um, if you've already made a contribution, thank you all so much and you will get a shout out um, as we progress. But right now, comrades, our Amali Taught Me audience has waited patiently for this live broadcast to hear from the leader of the African nation and worldwide African revolution, Chairman Amali Ishitela. So Uhuru Chairman, thank you for joining us this evening. We'd like to know more about the struggle for anti-colonial free speech and how Black Power 96 Radio contributes to that. So Uhuru Chairman, thank you for being on with us. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you, uh, Comrade uh, Akile, uh, uh, for for opening up this uh, event and for hosting and maintaining the uh, the work uh, with Black Power ninety six point uh, three. And I also want to send a special salute out to Comrade Ona Zanea Shatella, uh, who uh, is the uh, uh, the president of uh, of uh, the uh, the uh, nonprofit that uh that uh, uh holds the uh the responsible for uh for uh, black power 96 being on the air and uh, uh i think it's extremely important uh to say that we're just talking about two thousand dollars on today that's not very much for just for this show talking about ten thousand dollars we want to raise uh uh, uh, for uh, for this month, and that's not very much. Uh, I'm familiar uh, with uh, with uh, these uh, shows that listener supported shows. I have participated on them. Had show on on one different occasion uh, with uh, one of these listener supported shows, and uh, they didn't like what we had to say, so they kicked us off. Despite the fact that uh, our show raised more money than any of the other shows. Uh, uh, and to talk about, and they raised tremendous amounts of money. And we're just talking about $10,000 for the month of February. We're talking about also how this question of free speech is so fundamental uh, that our oppressors do not want us to have the ability to talk for ourselves and uh, to speak uh, uh, to each other and uh, to speak uh, to the world uh, to the extent that even after a federal government uh, uh, initiated program to deal with the uh, 
uh, COVID, consequences of COVID uh, that resulted uh, in granting uh, a, a grant uh, to Black Power 96. Even after that happened, they took the money. Uh, the the Pinellas County Commissioner of a local uh, government entity took the money and they did it on not just one occasion, but two occasions. So I think it's uh, a statement of how significant this question of, uh, of uh, free speech is and how significant the question of resources. And uh, when we talk about free speech, it should be remembered that, that free speech is not something uh, for me or just the Uhuru movement as Comrade uh, Director Keeley has said earlier. Uh, my freedom to speech is just one aspect of it, but your freedom to hear is another aspect of it. And when you look at the what we heard from the testimonies from some of the artists, uh, who uh, who were on this early on to this uh, this discussion? Uh, the fact is that uh, you can hear them uh, precisely because we have access to this institution, Black Power ninety six. That's sort of the free speech thing. It's not just freedom for them to be able uh, to put forth their art, but it's freedom for you to hear it. And the fact is that if you if you help to facilitate their ability to be heard, then you help to facilitate. Uh, the uh, the ability for them to put forth the kind of sound, the kind of cultural expressions uh, that do not uh, uh, degrade our culture, uh, that do not degrade our people, that it makes it unnecessary for them to sell their art and their, and their soul uh, to oppressors who would pay them enormous amounts of money to say the most horrific and, and uh, degrading things, humiliating things about us, about our people, about our art, et cetera. So, so donating is extremely important. So I'm hoping that that you would do that. And I'm hoping that uh, uh, that you will give more than the $2,000 that we're talking about, more than the $10,000 that we're talking about, and understand that it's, it's about more than just, just having this discussion that we're having on today. The, the fact is that uh, the issue of free speech uh, and why we are talking about uh, anti-colonial free speech is because there is no tradition, uh, generally speaking, of free speech uh, in the white world. Uh, and uh, uh, this is one of the reasons that in the United States, there's this thing called the First Amendment uh, to the Constitution. Uh, the First Amendment to the Constitution uh, uh, is a response uh, to the fact that uh, the Europeans who left Europe and came uh, to this land that is called the United States, uh, left in part uh, because, first of all, uh, because Europe was, was impoverished, had no, had no resources and had no freedoms. Uh, and so people left uh, 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 forced by starvation and poverty out of Europe uh, and, and into uh, this land and where uh, there was plenty. Uh, in fact, uh, the stories that that persuaded uh, Europeans, many of the Europeans to come here, uh, told a bounty uh, uh, unheard of. And I say here, I'm talking about this area that we this that we characterize as the Americas. So uh, they came looking for loot, and uh, they've told us the stories of how uh, they were looking for freedom of religion and freedom for this and and that, uh, because there was none of that. In, in Europe at the time, uh, they lived under uh, what was characterized as a feudal mode of production and uh, under feudalism, if you will. And when you talk about feudalism, you're talking about a very oppressive kind of system where, uh, for the most part, people uh, who, who labored, uh, they, were, they were stuck on the land. They couldn't even leave the land for the most part. They were stuck on the land. And they couldn't even, uh, uh, and, and if they worked on the land, they didn't even uh, uh, take the benefit, couldn't get the benefit of all of what they produced on that land. That land went to the, to the nobility, to the landlords, to the kings and queens and things like that. And there were no such things as rights that the people could be guaranteed. In fact, uh, uh, the nobility, the kings, they, they, they lived under this, uh, this, this concept of the divine right of kings that the king had all the rights and the rights were given to the king by God. And only God could, uh, could uh, say, uh, challenge anything that the king or the nobility or the landlords, the lords wanted to do. Only, only God could do that. There was no such thing as free speech. There was no such thing as 
as a, a First Amendment, et cetera. Uh, there was no freedom at all, and uh, except for the nobility. Uh, and, uh, and so this was, this was fundamental to uh, uh, the existence of this system that they lived under. And the, the nobility uh, is the force that even sent them into these other places, uh, like we call uh, uh, the, the United States and other places uh, in, in Africa, uh, et cetera. And they were sent there to look for loot and resources. And some of them were just, just uh, uh, forces who on, them, on their own put together their private companies. They were called pirates and they struck out uh, to, to loot uh, in various places around the world and this place in the United States is one of the places they came, but they went to other places as well. And so they struck out and they began to amass all these resources. Uh, they began to amass gold they actually and, and silver. And they began to even uh, develop sugar plantations, uh, et cetera, that changed all of Europe and much of the world. Because now not only could the peasants and, and the serfs work for uh, for on the feudal estates that were owned and controlled by the landlords, uh, but now they can work harder because sugar provided the kind of energy that allowed them to do that. It has allowed for the establishment of new industries. The trade in Black people, the capture and trade in African people created new industries, created industries that facilitated the development of chains and building ships and homes for and housing for uh, the people who were previously trapped on the land. Now they they were uh, able to go and work uh, on for for these new entrepreneurs, if you will, who were enslaving African people who who were needed in order to build these ships, who were needed in order to smelt and the iron and do these other kinds of things. They were needed to, to uh, grow industry like guns and things like this. In fact, uh, I was looking at something the other day that talked about the first big industry that was created in, the, in this country that they call the United States was guns, was weapons. And they used the weapons and the guns, of course, to do something that was really important for this discussion that we're having now and for the reason that we would characterize this uh, as, a, uh, as an anti-colonial free speech and why we have to fight for anti-colonial free speech. Because what happened was that the Europeans who left Europe and went to Africa and went to various other places that we now ref uh, refer to as the Americas, including what we call the United States, they went there and they took resources uh, from the people. These, these They were called at one time colonizers. They were sent by by the nobility, sent by kings and queens. Uh, they, they, they had things like uh, 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 shipping industries and lines that were created by, that were owned uh, by, by royalty, uh, like royal shipping lines and things like that. And so here they were initiating this process of, of taking gold and taking resources and building uh, a capacity uh, to grow their own at the expense of the indigenous people, the so-called Indians, who were spread throughout the Americas, and then they would capture, they had captured Africans, started this 600 years ago and began to disperse us around the world. And so the thing is that this was, these were called revolutionary people. They were, they were revolutionary in the sense that this was what we called the bourgeoisie. This is how they were defined, characterized themselves. These became the new capitalist forces, but they were revolutionary because they participated in overthrowing this oppressive system called feudalism. They participated in overthrowing feudalism by how? By getting these resources from Africa, by taking the land of the indigenous people, by enslaving African people here and, and, and other places around the world. So they, 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 they made this revolutionary struggle. They were characterized as progressive because they did things like the constitution. They did things that provide uh, free speech rights and freedom of assembly and things like that that didn't exist before. They did things like uh, assault the, the the dominance of the of the church. In fact, the church and the and the and the royalty played such an important role in oppressing the people in Europe uh, that one very important uh, philosopher in Europe, uh, his name was Diderot, from France, and uh, uh, he. He made the statement that um, that man will never be free uh, until the last king has been strangled uh, with the intestines of the last priest. So this was uh, this was an assault that he was talking about on the on the uh, on the relationship, the domination of the church and the, and 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 the king, the divine right of kings, and things like this. So the, this was what they were escaping from. This is why 
things like they would create laws like the First Amendment. They would create constitutions that would guarantee, in theory, certain kinds of rights for the people and how they, as they were able to be characterized as progressive. But the things that made it possible for them to do this, the thing that made it possible for them to develop industry the way they developed industry that liberated the people from, uh, 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 from uh, states of poverty and provided rights and freedoms for the people is the fact that they took rights and took freedom and took the resources from Africans and from the indigenous people here and from other peoples around the world. They attacked China uh, and fought, uh, fought China, uh, a, a so-called uh, 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 opium war against China that forced China uh, to take dope, opium, uh, to uh, in exchange for tea that they wanted for China that China didn't want to engage in that. And this is, they call it trade, just like they stole black people and they call it trade in uh, the slave trade, but we weren't engaging in the trade, we were captives. So here's what I'm saying, is that you had this feudal system, this feudal mode of production uh, 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 that oppressed all the white people, uh, not just, uh, they oppressed them around the world. You had the colonizers from this feudalism, they sent out colonizers, their objective there was to leave Europe, go to these other places, uh, accumulate capital, accumulate resources, uh, gold, silver, uh, and, and send it all sugar, uh, and send it all tea, all goes back to Europe. And in fact, you remember some of the stories that, that we get taught about the, uh, uh, the, 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 the ta taxation without representation, the, the, the struggle where the Boston Tea Party, where they throw the tea off the ships and stuff that was supposed to go back uh, to, uh, uh, to, uh, to, to the nobility, uh, to the rulers uh, in England uh, for whom they were supposed to be work, but they working, but they found a good thing here. And they didn't want to, they didn't want to send it all back to Europe. So they made this revolutionary struggle against Europe. They made what they call the American revolution in this instance, but this happening all around the world where the colonizers now are becoming uh, uh, really rich in what have been struggling against the dominance of the nobility, the dominance of the feudal system, et cetera, that overthrew that. And they were overthrowing this as the consequence of stealing the lands and stealing the labor and the resources from the colonized people. So you have this people who were fighting against despotism, fighting against tyranny, and they were certainly fighting against tyranny, uh, even if they were doing it in a fashion that was not supposed to uh, uh, involve um, uh, 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 most of the of the, even the white workers, but the point is that this democracy that they created was something that came at the expense of African and indigenous people. Uh, you know, examples of that, of course, is that right now uh, you have a, a, a world that's constructed. Uh, uh, the economic and political configuration of the entire world is based on colonialism, a uh, colonial mode of production. Uh, the resources and systems that they built to, to maintain uh, this process of parasitism of all the resources of the people of the world going to Europe, to white people, et cetera. This is the system. You have a situation now with Palestine that they call, where that's in the news a lot today, was one of those places. And so when you talk about uh, uh, people can't even use the term like uh, from the river to the sea, uh, because you had Europeans who left Europe and came to Palestine killed people, stole their land, uh, and then renamed the land and renamed themselves. They were no longer Germans. They were no longer Americans. They were no longer Russians. They became, they became Israelis. And so they stole the land. This is colonialism. And the Palestinian people now are colonized. And so you have the whole foundation of what is characterized as freedom for those white people uh, in, in, in what they have now called Israel uh, uh, at the expense of the Palestinian people. And so you see this massive gentrification process at gunpoint that's happening uh, in Palestine, bombings and, and murders and rapes and the most cruel kinds of uh, examples of oppression. And this is coming from people who are in the name of fighting for freedom, running from oppression, come to this territory of Palestine, take the freedom of the Palestinian people, put them, uh, uh, lock them in concentration camps like the Gaza Strip, and other places where they don't have access now to their own land, their own resources, et cetera. And they're cruelly dominated uh, by white power there, uh, the colonizer. And you can't say things like from the river to the sea without getting in trouble. You can go to jail in some places. What do they mean by the river to the sea, Palestine will be free from the river to the sea? They mean from the river to the sea, 
is that's the that's the boundaries of uh, of, of 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 Palestine. Uh, and so they say that Palestine doesn't exist anymore. This Israel, and to say from the river to the sea, uh, means that you want to commit genocide against the white people who call themselves uh, uh, who call themselves Israelis or Jews uh, uh, in that territory. Look at the United States, for example. Compare the river to the sea in Palestine, and compare America to the beautiful the song uh, from sea, sea to shining sea, which is a statement uh, that. That all of this territory, from the Pacific Ocean uh, to the Atlantic Ocean, all of this should belong to white people, despite the fact that the indigenous people were here, and and that and that that resulted in the process of extermination, millions and millions of indigenous people that they call Indians, and many of them are locked up in concentration camps called Indian reservations, and you can't you can't complain about that if the if the enslaved people have the right to uh, to speech. Um, now the people who fought they who fought against their own oppression uh, in Europe are the oppressors, and to, to for them to have free speech in feudal Europe was to criticize the king, criticize the queen, criticize the church, etc. Uh, and that was not tolerated under feudalism. And now free speech for for the oppressed here and other places around the world uh, criticizes colonialism. It criticizes white domination of the peoples of the world, and so to do that. Uh, uh, is uh, the law, you violate the laws that the oppressor have created in order to maintain the system that they've set up. So that's that's why uh, we were attacked on July 29th, uh, uh, 2022. And I say, we, I'm talking about the Uhuru movement. Uh, first, they didn't want us to be able to talk and they didn't want you to be able to hear what we had to say because the only, what do we have to talk about as an enslaved people except opposition to slavery, criticism of slavery. Criticism of this relationship that we have uh, with the social system that is parasitic, born parasitic, sucks the blood, sucks the resources, sucks the dreams, the hopes, the aspirations of the people away from our people and transfer those dreams, those humps, hopes, those resources to the colonizer. <laughs> so that's why we say anti-colonial free speech, the colonized, those of us who are oppressed have to fight for the right to free, free speech have to fight for those kinds of rights, and we have to fight against the forces who, in the name of, of free speech, uh, created this, this entity that we live under today, created this, what they characterize as democracy, made constitutions for their own benefit uh, uh, in the name of protecting free speech, but now they have become the tyrants, they have become the despots uh, that they were opposed to uh, some time ago. So this is this is what we are looking at. And while we are talking about free speech, there is no tradition of free speech in Europe. Um, uh, they, they, they had to wage struggle, struggle, struggle. And this is what has given uh, this bourgeoisie, this, this new force of capitalist uh, a reputation for progressiveness. This is what gave them their reputation of, 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 of being revolutionary because they overthrew colonialism. But the uh, uh, feudalism, but they overthrew feudalism as a part of the consequence of, of oppressing and stealing and enslaving and colonizing Africans, indigenous people, and other oppressed peoples around the world. And so the free speech that they fought for, that they put in the constitution and what have you, is now something that is threatened because, <laughs> because they have taken away the free speech upon which this this the this, this whole entity uh, uh, is based uh, from Africans and from other people. So they are constantly engaged in assault and free speech. Uh, and they say that the system is based on free speech. So this is the dilemma for them. It's not our dilemma, it's their dilemma. So uh, I just think it's really important that all of us are conscious of that and that it's bigger than what many people think. Uh, our perception of the world is one that has been shaped uh, by our oppressors. They have free speech. They have the radio stations. They have the TV stations. They have all forms of medium. They that that uh, and they control even churches, etc., uh, uh, and other other means of expression. And that's what we are trying to now is to engage in the ability to express, to talk to you, to and 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 to talk to other peoples here and around the world, so that our voices can be heard, and so that the oppressed can be heard, and so that. In hearing this and, and, and having these discussions, we erode the power of this tyranny uh, that we exist in under colonial domination.
so uh, I think it's really important that uh, that uh, that that you uh, contribute, that you uh, make donations to this, because uh, even in in taking us to trial, uh, they want to narrow this discussion. So they want to say that uh, uh, when they can take away the right to speak, if you can't speak, speech is one of the things that uh, contributes to the dignity of the human being. Uh, speech is something that helps to separate uh, humans uh, from, from uh, other animals uh, in the world. And uh, to take away speech contributes to bestialization of black people and other oppressed people. They can get away with saying that we are beast-like because we can't talk. If you talk, you die. So you know you're not supposed to talk. If you talk, they'll attack your house at five o'clock in the morning. Uh, so they know that you must love the situation that you live in because you're too afraid to say anything about it. This is what they do. And so this contributes to a kind of uh, philosophy that's born of this kind of social system uh, that would, would, uh, would relegate us to states of bestiality. Black people are beasts. Uh, black people are brutes. Uh, 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 black people are animal-like, uh, et cetera, without any history. So they put us on trial. They say uh, they put limitations on what we can say. We are not even going to be easily able to say, you're trying us, you're putting us on trial, charging us uh, for something the Russians were supposed to have told us to do when the history of our relationship to this country shows that we'd be crazy if we were not doing exactly what we were doing. We would be insane if we were not protesting what you're doing. To, we would be out of our minds if we were not looking for friends and allies around the world who would unite with us against in this process of oppression that we live with. We, we would be crazy if we were not saying that our children have the right to have a future. That it is irrational and insane to have somebody who say that they're white or who they are colonizers, even if they don't say it anymore, that's what's understood by the whole world uh, that they can determine our future and whether or not in, uh, we can speak and when we can speak and what we can say, et cetera. That's something that uh, you must oppose. And you oppose that by, by joining in and sending resources. And I'm gonna ask them to say something about how much resources you've already sent because I expect we've already exceeded the $2,000 that we're talking about. We may have, have, uh, have reached the $10,000 that we're supposed to be uh, uh, raising this year. All you got to do is go to uh, blackpower96.org uh, slash donate. Blackpower96.org slash donate. Send the money now so that we can continue talking. We can expand our capacity to talk because more and more people need to be engaged in discussion. In fact, more and more people are engaged in the discussion in part because of what it is that this radio station does and part of what this radio station does that you help to make possible. So we want you to send the resources. We think it's extremely important that you do that uh, and that uh, we create a new situation because as I said, there is no tradition of free speech uh, in Europe. And uh, the free speech, uh, every everything that looks like freedom, democracy uh, in this country is something that was forged through black blood. Uh, the rights, uh, even universal suffrage for everybody can vote. Uh, 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 the, uh, the right to for freedom of assembly. We fought and died for those kinds of questions here. Black people did in this country. And so they say they put together a system, the colonizer for themselves. So it's in elections is what you're supposed to do to, to have a contest, this nonviolent contest between different sectors of the rulers uh, for control of the state, for the ability to make profit, et cetera. Uh, and that's what it's supposed to be just for them. But we fought uh, for the right. Black people did this and died, had churches bombed, leaders assassinated, just for the right to vote and to participate in the electoral process. And then what happens? They, they At the same time we are making this struggle for the right to vote, at the same time they're gonna have to make this concession because thousands and thousands of poor black people are in the streets of this country and the United States is being embarrassed all around the world by having to shoot water hoses and electrical uh, prods on African children who are just trying to fight for the right for voter registration and things like this. And, and, and the United States is being embarrassed around that around the world uh, because of that. And so they're going to have to make a concession. They're going to have to say, OK, everybody can vote. But before they do that, they start killing 
1965, the Voting Rights Act was passed. 1965, they also killed Malcolm X. 1968, they killed Martin Luther King, who was talking about a poor people's campaign, who was organizing African people everywhere in this country to demonstrate against oppression. 1969, they killed Fred Hampton. And they also made assaults against black revolutionary forces throughout this country and around the world. They killed Patrice Lumumba in 1960. They killed they overthrew Patrice Lumumba in 1966. They killed they killed uh, 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 Patrice. Uh, they killed Che Guevara uh, after wounding him. They in Bolivia. They killed him in 1967. So it was mass murder to shut us down so that even if you can now participate in elections, you ain't got no program no more. Only program you got is Joe Biden's program. Only program you got is the Democratic Party and possibly the Republican Party. So people feel trapped. If you got to be a, a Democrat or you got to be a Republican, you got to be with Biden or you got to be with Trump. And we're saying you don't have to be with either one of those and that we have a right to say that. And we have the right to organize ourselves. We have the right to speak to each other, to speak to the world and say there is an alternative and that we show that this alternative is viable because here's a radio station that we're talking on that the working class, the African working class uh, has brought into existence. And here uh, are projects that the African People's Social Party has initiated throughout the United States uh, that shows that we can feed, clothe and house ourselves if the United States government would, would if we can move this colonial entity off of our necks. We show that African people can reconnect with each other all around the world, even after we've been forcibly dispersed at gunpoint and, and taken in shackles uh, every place around the world. It can happen. And this is what they don't want us to talk about. And this is why they would attack us. And this is why you must, you must, you must make whatever kinds of contribution that you can make. Uh, go to blackpower96.org slash donate. Make your contribution. Let's quickly do this $2,000 tonight. Uh, and let's exceed that. And let's, if we can, let's do the $10,000 that we're talking about we want to raise for February uh, right now. Uhuru, thank you very much. Uhuru, Uhuru, Chairman. Chair, I would just want to echo that call for people to contribute to blackfriend96.org slash donate, make your contributions. And I just want to really want to salute you, Chairman, for that profound presentation um, around the question of anti-colonial free speech and this assault that's being made, um, not just on our movement, but on the struggle and the rights of all people to not be able to just make the criticism of colonialism, but to hear the criticism of colonialism. That, you know, we, like you said, we have a viable alternative to this vicious parasitic social system that they don't even want the people to know about. They just want people to believe that they are trapped with these lesser of two evil options with the same colonial system. And in fact, here it is. Here we are. And, you know, having uh, done and for the past 50 years that we've been in existence as the Uhuru movement have actually, you know, uh, have practical evidence of transforming the lives of African people where these forces who have endless amounts uh, of, of access to our resources haven't done a single thing. We'll never do a single thing because they live at our expense. And so here we are, we make it happening. And this radio station is just a testament to that. You know, it's something that the African working class built, you know, quite literally, you know, with our like bare hands and, you know, in terms of laying down foundation and painting walls and all these kinds of stuff to bring this kind of institution to our community. And, um, you know, so I just really want to salute your leadership. And I also want to acknowledge the leadership of President Onizanea Shetela, um in this process, who is, um, you know, part responsible for, you know, taking out the vision uh, and your leadership and, you know, carrying out and creating these institutions and having the vision and, you know, providing that leadership and and including with Black Crying Six and over the African People's Education and Defense Fund. So just wanted to salute Deputy Chair, uh, President Onizanea Ishitela. And um, just, again, really unite with everything that you just laid out. And there were so many, you know, things that, you know, I, I wanted to be able to, you know, just contribute or, um, you know, say as you were going. And um, one, um, we see the significance of an institution like Black Power 96 with regard to, you know, fighting for anti-colonial free speech. Because first of all, I mean, where are you going to hear this type of analysis and programming, you know, um, other than a station like Black Power 96? And I remember on the day of the raids, I mean, one of the, the 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 things that the FBI were clear that they had to do was sever the communication of the African community. And, you know, so they took Black Power 96 off air while they raided our building. And that's 
that's their recognition of the the power and the significance of a tool like Black Power 96. And we can, you know, learn about that looking at revolution, um, the history of radio and revolutions past and the significance of having radio, um, you know, uh, as part of these struggles. So the colonial state is aware of that. And um, so we should, you know, be, um, you know, ever more clear about the significance and the power that an institution like Black Power 96 Radio holds. And um, just with regard to how the the colonizer is was able to just like it's just like the colonizer's life and everything that it experiences, um, you know, um, uh, they're even what they experience as uh, in terms of democracy, which you characterize as the bourgeois democracy. They were able to achieve this. I mean, you just laid all of this out, able to achieve this democracy at our expense, you know, by making by taking it away from African and indigenous people and. You know, I've, um, you know, like read about the the muzzles they would drill into Africans faces, you know, um, how they would, uh, you know, make sure they separated Africans through, from uh, uh, similar regions who could possibly communicate, you know, in, in, in the same or similar languages. And just because of the power of communication, just being able to talk. And, you know, so that you can come to the same conclusions about your conditions and, and organize to overturn them. So they were clear they had to make it impossible for Africans to be able to speak, um, make it impossible for Africans to be able to, to, to read. So if you get caught with a book, you know, you could, you know, suffer um, some kind of, um, uh, you know, punishment um, and, you know, just all, all of these, all of these things. And I mean, that's exactly what we're looking at today. I mean, with the attempted you know, um, imprisonment of you and the Uhuru three up to 15 years in prison. This is a part of that same colonial trajectory and assault against African people from being able to, you know, exercise our own agency to say, here is our aspirations. This is where we want to go. This is where we have to go. And, um, and, you know, being able to win masses of people to it, because, you know, we know when you get on the platform and you say this, I mean, people's brains start, you know, just, connecting all the dots. And that's exactly what they, you know, are, are afraid of happening. So, you know, we just have to um, really dig in and uh, support these institutions that allow us to, you know, um, not just exercise our First Amendment, but fight back to um, engage in anti-colonial free speech, to be able to make the criticism of colonialism and to say, what is our way forward? Um, so just really, really want to salute again, this profound discussion. Um, and we will have time, um, comrades for, you know, people to, um, you know, ask questions if you have any questions. Um, and we do have donations pouring in and I want to, um, you know, take a minute to acknowledge those who have uh, donated so far. We have, um, comrade Kumba in St. Louis with $10. Want to say, Uhuru, comrade Kumba. Uh, to Comrade Lisa in Minneapolis, who pledged $100 today. Uhuru, Comrade Lisa. We also have Comrade Sandy in Olympia, Washington, who pledges $60. Uhuru, Comrade Sandy. We have Comrade Raya in Chicago, Illinois, with $25. Uhuru, Raya. And we have an anonymous donor of $20. Thank you, anonymous. We have Comrade Jesse in St. Louis, Missouri, with $20. Uhuru, Comrade Jesse. Uh, Comrade Kitty, and also in St. Louis, Missouri, with $50. Uhuru, Comrade Kitty. Uh, we have uh, Comrade MQ in Gainesville, Florida, with $45 today. Uhuru, MQ. Comrade Stephanie in Oakland, California, $25 today. Uhuru, salute, Comrade Stephanie. Comrade Maureen in St. Louis, Missouri, with $100. Uhuru, Comrade Maureen, thank you so much for your contribution. We have Comrade in Yindu in Fort Myers, Florida with $120 this evening. Salute to Comrade in Yindu, uh, one of the founding members of the African People's Socialist Party, um, you know, dating back 1972 and with us today fighting in the trenches. So Huru Comrade in Yindu, thank you so much for your contribution. We have Secretary General M. Wazy in San Diego, California with $50. Oh, Huru Comrade M. Wazy. We have Chairwoman Penny of the African People's Solidarity Committee in St. Louis with $50. Oh, Huru, Chairwoman Penny. We have Comrade Ruby in St. Louis with $25. Oh, Huru, thank you, Comrade Ruby. And we have uh, Malcolm. Uh, Malcolm, uh, I don't know where you're located, Malcolm, but pledges $50 on YouTube. All right. Thank you, Comrade Malcolm. So that brings us to $750 raised this evening 
with uh, only $1,250 left, comrades. And we have an hour left to go. I know that we can do this. Like Chairman said, we can exceed this. And even, you know, let's make $10,000 this evening. You know, if you have access to that, that those resources, and we really pose this question in a very serious way, because we know some people do have access to these resources. And if you can make the, 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 the contribution right now, go ahead and make it to blackcrown86.org slash donate. But every single contribution counts and it's, it's significant and we really, really uh, just want to appreciate everybody who's made contributions so far, all of our sustaining members and supporting members of the station. So continue to give as we go along through this program, comrades. Let's meet our $2,000 goal. Let's exceed it and let's get to $10,000 raised in February for Black Pride 96 Radio, the baddest radio station on, on, on the planet, under the baddest nonprofit on the planet, the African People's Education and Defense Fund. So um, we're going to acknowledge more donors um, in just, just a moment. But right now, I want to take you through um, some announcements to let people know, our audience know, uh, what's coming up in the Uhuru movement, related activities, and what you can expect and look forward to. So... Of course, join the counteroffensive to stop the FBI attacks on the African People's Socialist Party and the African liberation struggle. Drop the charges against the Uhuru 3, sign the petition, sign the emergency response pledge for immediate updates regarding, regarding the trial, and read all of the uh, recent developments inside of the, uh, the legal case. We had our motion to dismiss. The prosecutors on behalf of the U.S. government made a response. Um, we issued, you know, our response, and then there is the the magistrate judge when we did our oral arguments hearing, who uh, issued his recommendation to deny our motion to dismiss, and then our lawyers' brilliant objection to this denial, um, and so you know, still uh, awaiting um, for the presiding judge to make a ruling over the motion to dismiss. But you can read all of these updated documents at handsoffuhuru.org. Make sure you stay up to uh, stay up to date. Uh, with you know how the legal proceedings are are developing and again sign an emergency response pledge because we want everybody to descend um, if there's going to be a trial in Tampa, Florida. So um, again, stay stay tuned for those updates on handsoffuhuru.org. And also the Hands Off Uhuru, Hands Off Africa Counter Offensive is calling on you to bring your skills, your experience, and creativity to this fight back. Go to handsoffahru.org slash volunteer to see the list of committees and sign up to volunteer. Build the global anti-colonial free speech movement. And on uh, July 8th of 2023, the Hands Off Uhuru uh, Fight Back Coalition was formed, comprised of individuals and organizations across the political spectrum who united in building the anti-colonial free speech movement to say drop the charges on the Uhuru 3 and defend the right to freedom of speech. The Hands Off Uhuru Fight Back Coalition embraces and fights for the struggles of African, Indigenous, and oppressed peoples around the world. Read our statement of unity, read the demands, and join the Hands Off Uhuru Fight Back Coalition today. You can go to handsoffuhuru.org slash coalition if you'd like to become an individual or an organizational member. And tomorrow, Wednesday, February 21st, is African Martyrs Day. Tune in for a web event hosted by the African People's Socialist Party. You can view it on the Burning Spur TV YouTube channel or on Facebook at African People's Socialist Party USA or on the chairman's Facebook page. Visit the latest blog on the party's website, APSPUHRU.org, to learn more about African Martyrs Day and for resources you can use to hold your own event in recognition of African Martyrs Day. On Saturday, February 24th at 2 p.m. Eastern, the Hands Off Uhuru Fight Back Coalition presents the bold anti-war statement that sparked FBI raids, a webinar on the two-year anniversary of the Russia-slash-Ukraine war. Reserve your spot in this important event by going to handsoffuhuru.org slash register. On Wednesday, February 28th at 6.30 p.m. Central Time, join the African People's Solidarity Committee for their monthly webinar, Calling on the White People, Viewing Today's Omali Taught Me Study, Register and participate in this event that will address current events from the perspective of African internationalism and how white people can take a genuine anti-colonial stand by working under the leadership of the African Revolution. Register at apscuhuru.org slash webinar. 
The 2024 Uhuru Solidarity Movement National Convention takes place March 9th and 10th in St. Louis, Missouri, as the colonial ruling class escalates their genocidal colonial terror against African, Palestinian, indigenous, and oppressed peoples, an anti-colonial resistance sweeps the world from Gaza to Burkina Faso to North St. Louis. Now is the time for white people to stand in anti-colonial solidarity and demand no more genocide in our name. Go to nomoregenocide.eventb.com to register. And the African National Women's Organization calls on Black women and our supporters to attend the 2024 Black Women's Convention, an annual gathering of our membership and working class Black women who believe a better world is possible. We organize these conventions because we believe that we must struggle against the devastating impact of colonialism on the lives of African women around the world. African women from every city, town, province, country, island, and village must attend this convention. Join virtually online or in person in St. Louis, Missouri from March 22nd to the 24th, 2024. Go to convention.anwo, that's A-N-W-O, Uhuru, dot org. And make sure you like and subscribe to the Burning Spirit TV on YouTube to catch every episode of the Amali Taught Me Study. Uhuru Tours and Speakers Bureau is an institution of the African People's Socialist Party that coordinates events and tours for Chairman Amalia Chatella and other party speakers and leaders. Book Chairman Amalia and other Uhuru Movement speakers for your campus or organization now by emailing info at uhurutours.com or call 727-914-3621. And for all events not listed here, please visit theburningspirit.com slash events to check out everything going on in the Uhuru movement. So comrades, thank you for your patience as we get, uh, we got through those announcements, wanted to make sure you were up to date with everything that's going on, which you can be a part of, and um, want to go ahead and recognize some more of our donors that just came in. Um, comrade MQ, man, we all, we have a saying in this movement now, it says, be like MQ, in Gainesville, Florida, who dropped another $75, totaling $120 tonight. So thank you, Uhuru Comrade MQ, for your contribution to Black Power 96 Radio. We have Janet Van Fleet in Washington, who became a $25 a month sustainer earlier this week. So Uhuru Comrade Janet Van Fleet, Uhuru, thank you so much for your contribution and your support to Black Power 96. We have Comrade Kara in Oakland, California with $25. Uhuru Comrade Kara, thank you so much. And we have Comrade Transcoso from Brooklyn, New York with an $100 pledge. So Uhuru Comrade Transcoso, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Thank you so much for your contribution. We are now at $950 raised, only $1,000 uh, $1, and $1,050 left to go. So let's go. And I I see that's um, uh, changing right now. Hold on. Oh, Kara actually gave $50 today. Uhuru. So Uhuru Comrade Kara, thank you for your $50 contribution. Salute uh, to you. And we're going to get that, that total updated in just a moment. So comrades, please continue to donate blackpower96.org slash donate or via cash app at dollar sign blackpower96. Or you can mail a check to Black Power 96 at 1245 18th Avenue South, St. Petersburg, Florida, 33705. And I just want to remind people what you get when you donate. So if we can uh, bring back those give backs so people can see, you know, if, if you want a, re a reminder of what you receive based off your contribution, maybe you want to up it um, or, you know, for those who are are still waiting to push that donate button, want to see what they get. So let's take a look at those give backs. All right. Do do. Okay, our tech is getting that up. Um, let me see if they're, oh, there we go. All right, so comrades, again, for all of our um, donors tonight, everyone will receive this Black Power 96 sticky notepad for all of your reminders with station manager DJ Eddie's motivating call, get out that bed. So a reminder to get out that bed, start your day, um, you know, uh, uh, deepen the struggle against uh, colonialism and fight for anti-colonial free speech. Make sure you write that on your sticky notes. So again, you get the all donors tonight get this Black Power 96 sticky notes pad. And then every donor who gives $100 today or more or becomes a monthly sustainer at $10 a month or more will get this Black Power 96 drawstring bag. So add to your Black Power 96 swag um, or uh, collect, you know, collect it today um, with $100 or more or with a $10 or more um, sustainer 
uh, membership. Give $200 or more today. You can receive the chairman's new book, The Verdict is in Reparations, now. And if you give $300 today or more or become a new $25 a month sustainer, you will get the Black Power 96 radio t-shirt. So you'll get the t-shirt, you'll get the book, you will get the drawstring bag, and you will get that sticky notepad. So comrades, $300 today or more. So there's still time if you want to up your donation so that you can get all of these incredible give backs. Um, again, $300 or, or more or $25 a month sustainer um, a, a sustainer membership to Black Power 96 Radio will get you the Black Power 96 T. So comrades, make sure you are donating to blackpower96.org slash donate. Again, cash app dollar sign Black Power 96 or send a check in the mail to Black Power 96, 1245 18th Avenue South, St. Petersburg, Florida, 337 Five. And Comrade MQ just upped it again, $25. So that's $145 from MQ tonight. MQ is not playing. So be like MQ, comrades, and make your donation to Black Pride 96 Radio today. This powerful discussion that we're having, these, these platforms, you know, we can't find anywhere else. I mean, we built these platforms, you know, so that we can, you know, be able to put out this kind of analysis, put out our own stories to make the criticism of colonialism, to practice anti-colonial free speech. This is the institution that allows us to do that. One of the things I wanted to mention too is that, you know, we uh, part of, you know, we broadcast these studies as well to to be able to use, um, you know, social media platforms to the extent that we are able. But we also know that these tools are are those of the colonial state, so they will, and we know you know, uh, uh, carry out the censorship of anti-colonial free speech all the time. They don't want this message to get out there. They don't want us to be able to communicate with the masses of people, you know, that's out there using these platforms. So they will intentionally make sure that we can't reach people. They will shadow ban our platform. So that's why an institution like Black Pride 96, again, plays such an important role in the struggle. Because while these tools remain in the hands of the colonial state and practice the censorship and banning, you know, uh, against the ideas of the African revolution, against the struggle against colonialism, we have tools like Black Pride 96 that allows us to, to fight back and to push and distribute these ideas. So again, we have to support an institution like Black Pride 96 Radio. We have to support this radio station. And we do that with dollars and cents. We have to do that with dollars and cents to keep this station on the air and continue to carry out this mission. So thank you, comrades, for the contributions that you have made um, already uh, thus far. And we want to you know, see if there's any questions uh, coming through uh, for uh, Chairman. I don't know if there's um, you know, any anything you might have wanted to, to, to jump in and, and say at any point while I get some, look for some questions from our online audience. Um, well, yeah, yeah, I want to thank you, Comrade, because I, I think that um, a, an objective of, uh, of the whole colonial power historically, uh, it has to be to, uh, to bestialize uh, the colonial subject. You build a whole uh, capacity to feed, clothe, and, and house yourself at the expense of other peoples uh, who are denied the ability to do that. You look at where uh, the colonizer is extracting all this wealth and value uh, in Africa, for example, uh, you know, 12 million square miles of nothing but wealth and richness. And you see uh, how uh, using uh, places like Nigeria uh, as an example, uh, how uh, in Nigeria uh, they do not even have access to electricity where uh, uh, the, so much of the uranium comes from that uh, has has uh, been responsible for 60, 70 percent of uh, the electrical power uh, in France. You, you look at, uh, uh, you know, and this is something that's uh, that's reflected, you know, all over the world that they take our resources, and then uh, the, that the colonial does that, and the colonial subject must be denied the right to uh, to uh, to say anything to about this. And if you can't say anything about it, then it 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 gives uh, uh, the impression of, uh, that's provided by the colonizer that you're satisfied that we are satisfied with this situation. Uh, so uh, they would terrorize people into silence. They kill, murder, brutalize people to an extent that's hard to even quantify. It's hard for, for people to even believe and understand in boiling human beings. Uh, 
cutting of, of, of fetus out of pregnant uh, African women, They're doing similar things to indigenous uh, women. Uh, I just saw uh, something the other day indicating that uh, that uh, these uh, Israeli uh, used tanks to to run over uh, pregnant women and and kill the women and the babies. You know, like this is a form of terror. And so people become so terrorized that they don't talk, or if they do talk, they're killed. And this is an example of what happens if you do talk. Or they come at five o'clock in the morning and they bomb your houses and uh, 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 and put you in prison and threaten to imprison you for 15 years. And so people are silent. <laughs> and in the face of this silence, then the, the rulers who won't allow us to have uh, 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 significant uh, media outlets and things like that control the narrative. And uh, they uh, can uh, help to uh, try and convince the people uh, that this is exactly what African people want. They will not allow uh, us to have uh, what we need in terms of Black Power 96, where we get quality music, where people come on a regular basis with cultural expressions. They don't allow that. So only thing that people have the greatest access to is is garbage stuff that you know that that really uh, humiliates African people that that uh, says you know uh, you know horrible things about African women uh, that promotes drugs and 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 murder things like this and then uh, then they they use their medium and their free speech to be able to say that's the way black people are. That's what black people want, et cetera, uh, to make sure that we don't have an opportunity uh, or to try to make sure. Of course, we're going we're gonna to do it otherwise. And this 96.3 is an example of the a relentless uh, struggle that Africans and colonized people will, will make. And so people who don't have to be on the front lines of the struggle don't necessarily have to join mobilizations and demonstrations don't have to do those things necessarily, but you can donate. This can be, you know, one of the ways that you can join and support the Revolutionary Project by making contributions. I mean, I'm really saddened to say here that we, what, raised, what, a hundred, I mean, thousand, maybe, uh, uh, you know, less than $2,000 already. And uh, it just seems to me that uh, we should be able to easily uh, I do more than that. And, you know, I, I say, like I said, you know, we should go for the whole 10 grand uh, that we're supposed to do in February, you know. So I just wanted to say that this is uh, extremely, extremely important. One of the things that our lawyers, uh, if we don't do this again, if they can do this to us and, and keep us quiet, they like to promote the notion, and this is deep in colonial uh, uh, culture, uh, that the colonized people are simply beast. We are, we are silent beast, animal-like, and, and and we can't. We we don't even have the capacity to speak. Growing up in in school, you know, uh, we get taught. Uh, I did, uh, especially when I was much younger, uh, that uh, African people uh, were not capable of expressing ourselves. And of course, uh, it's such a fallacious. Uh, thing to even say when, you know, you see speech and, uh, you know, springing up out of Africa, you see human life, culture coming out of Africa. Uh, uh, you don't see that coming out of Europe. It's out of Africa that spread to other places around the world. And so you have a situation where those who were, again, victimized by repression came up, came through systems of repression, came through traditions of repression, no rights, et cetera, and then overthrow those rights, uh, those that repression as a consequence of stealing the rights and resources uh, from other people, the starving Europeans that in 1300s was so bad in, 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 in England that in London, there were stories of people even eating their babies. So this is the starvation that they experienced. And then they come and take all the resources from Africa, from other places, and then say that we uh, are impoverished uh, not because of what they stole from us, not because of what they've told, taken from us, not because of the systems that they've created to make sure that that continues to go on, uh, but because we are beast and uh, uh, and uh, we are uh, inept uh, as human beings, uh, etc. So we are in struggle against that. You are too. Everybody who is uh, participating right now 
uh, in this in this uh, uh, this this uh, uh, study, O'Malley taught me in this uh, participating in on Black Power ninety six. You are engaged in struggle against this too, uh, and and so the bourgeoisie, you know, uh, you know when you look at the weather. And bourgeois uh, mediums, you see, is paid for by liquor stores, by liquor companies, by now drug corporations, by pharmaceutical corporations, and things like that that do harm and damage to the people. Uh, except that's those are the corporations doing that, and the federal government itself supports this kind of stuff. We are on our own. Uh, we, that is to say, the people are on our own, and we are fighting against these systems of uh, of a uh, repression and exploitation. Uh, that would keep us quiet if they could. So we have to do everything that we can to put the resources where they are needed uh, so that the people's voice can be expressed and can be heard. Go to blackpower96.org uh, slash donate and make a huge contribution. Uhuru. Uhuru, Chairman, huge. Um, <laughs> and I uh, just want to acknowledge uh, some forces who are heeding the call and uh, just a correction, Comrade Ruby became a $25 a month sustainer. Um, so um, that means a $25 um, a month um, uh, recurring uh, donation to Black for 96 Radio. So thank you, Comrade Ruby, for becoming a $25 a month sustainer. Comrade MQ uh, donated again um, uh, another $175. MQ. Total MQ. <laughs> it totaled $320 tonight. If that's a statement of I love Black Power 96 uh -huh. Radio, that's it. That's it right there. Comrade MQ is making that statement. Salute, Comrade MQ. $320 total tonight. Comrade Faux Feet is increasing her sustainership to $10 a month. Uhuru, Comrade uh -huh. Faux Feet. Uhuru. And uh, Comrade Wendy S. in Oakland, California. Faux Feet's my cousin. Yes. Okay. Uhuru. Cousin Uhuru. Uhuru. <laughs> yeah. uh, Comrade Wendy S. in Oakland, California, donated $20 this evening. Uhuru, Comrade Wendy. Uhuru. And Comrade Steven in Illinois with $25. So that brings us to 1555 1555 We have $445 left to raise, comrades. Somebody can drop Four hundred dollars in the in 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 to Black Brian Six Radio. I know it. Um, and comrades, you know, again, we are going to fight to get uh, to exceed our two thousand dollar goal again. If you can make the full contribution of ten thousand uh, dollars, please do so. Um, and again, hu make huge contributions, wallop contributions to BlackPower96.org slash donate. Um, Chairman, I wanted to read this comrade from Comrade Visto who's tuned in with us all the way from Namibia um, uh, in Southern Africa, says, Uhuru Chairman, your analysis of our par parasitic, of parasitic relationship with the colonizer just keeps sharpening my understanding of the way imp uh, imperial capitalism continues to keep us in perpetual slavery. As long as this system exists, will the oppressed never live meaningful lives? We will liberate ourselves. So that's Comrade Visto. Um, may, I, uh, may I just yes. uh, come at Visto, uh, who is in Namibia that was called Southwest Africa uh, uh, under the absolute domination by the colonial powers there. And I met with uh, uh, the, the, the man who's characterized as the founding father of the Namibian nation, who was the leader of the uh, uh, Southwest African People's Organization, SWAPO. And uh, 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 when I was there uh, in Namibia, it was an extraordinary visit. Uh, I cannot overstate how powerful that visit was. I spoke to university students, and I was on television on a regular basis there, so much so that by the time I left walking through uh, customs uh, at the airport that the people knew me you know, as I was coming through. But uh, I remember Comrade uh, Sam Nuyoma, uh, who uh, was the former president meeting in his office, and he he talked about how um, uh, in Namibia, you know, with uh, all of these resources uh, under the earth, uranium and other kinds of uh, resource, natural wealth, uh, and he's saying how the people are starving, the people are hungry there, 
uh, because all those resources are owned uh, by foreigners and and Europe, Germany in particular, but other forces. So this is that colonial relationship that we're talking about. Continue to extract the value from us and dominate us, and then even nominal freedom doesn't change that. It hasn't changed that. Uh, and this is what gives uh, everybody who uh, is participating in this discussion, this meeting now, an, an opportunity to exercise the heroic uh, uh, agency uh, to contribute to um, to uh, uh, bringing these resources, blackpower96.org uh, uh, slash donate, uh, so that we can uh, challenge this, this oppressive and exploitative relationship. Uh, that has been imposed on the peoples of the world. Uhuru. Visto. Uhuru. Glad to, glad to see you, comrade. Uhuru. Yes. Uhuru, comrade. Visto, thank you for joining us. And, you know, just recognizing that this radio station, you know, is something that's accessible uh, all over the world by Africans all over the world. If you download the, download the Black Pro 96 um, mobile app, you know, we have the ability to have this same kind of analysis, this same discussion, the incredible uh, talent and uh, genius of the African working class, you know, accessible all around the globe. So I want to just remind comrades too to download that Black Pride 96 radio app. And Comrade Visto, you know, calls on the people to donate to Black Pride 96 as well. Um, Comrade Raya um, comments, Uhuru, salute Chairman Amalia Chantella, Black Power 96 FM radio. I unconditionally unite and support the right of African and indigenous people worldwide to build independent self-determination, economic and political programs and institutions, forward the right to anti-colonial free freedom of speech, yes, reparations now. So that's Comrade Raya. Um, salute uh, Comrade Raya and thank you so much uh, for your contributions as well. Um, <clears throat> Woo. All right. Sorry. Uh, we've got uh, Comrade MQ with another $50. So that's $370 that MQ has contributed tonight. MQ is getting mm -hmm. all the gifts, all the gift bags. <laughs> <laughs> comrade. Um, and we have a uh, comrade tuning in, Charles, uh, Charles, uh, who Charles Davis, who uh, just made a pledge of five hundred dollars chairman ooh, <laughs> so, ooh, ooh, ooh. comrade charles uh so um comrades we have uh raised two thousand one hundred and five dollars but we're not stopping so let's keep raising these funds for black power 96 radio we have surpassed our goal by 105 and we need to go all the way up to ten thousand dollars by the end of february so let's get us closer and closer to the goal as we still have some time uh, this evening um again really really salute all of you for making your contributions comrades i want to uh recognize an organization that checked in here chairman says africa the african people's conference um, checked in is watching with us today says uh, the organization is a big fan of you chairman um, and would love to collaborate um, in the future so we will uh, be in contact with you African People's Conference thank you for joining with us today um, and and yeah tuning into the Omali taught me study this special broadcast um, so um, hold on um, I, okay I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I read this correctly oh let me let me get this correct Charles Davis is saying $500 per month to Black Power 96 Radio. Whoa. <laughs> Uhuru. Uhuru, comrade. Charles Davis, thank you so much. And wow, comrades, that, that is a huge commitment. And that, again, is like expressing profound love and unity with Black Power 96 Radio, this institution, and the, the work that it does, the purpose that it serves for our people. So thank you so much, uh, Charles for that incredible contribution. Um, and uh, again, comrades, let's not stop. If there's anybody else like Charles who can you know, make a similar contribution tonight, please go ahead and do so. Uh, we have um, uh, just you know a couple of minutes left here. And um, um, yes, comrade, uh, Char oh, comrade Charles is saying that they want to donate $9,000 to the campaign as well. So we'll have to follow up with, with comrade Charles uh, with regard to that and want to make sure is that the um, that might be the hands off of Huru campaign. So uh, we'll check with Comrade Charles uh, with regard to, um, uh, you know, where, where he's trying to make sure just his contributions are going where they need to. So thank you, Comrade Charles. We are happy to have you on. Um, Uhuru says, I am on the team right on. So um, let me see if there are any other questions. Um, yeah, no I just I yeah. want to say just in terms of how this 
uh, issue of uh, anti-colonial free speech is so profound. As you know, uh, the United States government uh, attacked us. I mean, there are three of us who are facing 15 years in prison, but it's me. You know, I am the real target here. You know, who I've been fighting them uh, now for more than 50 years uh, around the freedom of African people, around reparations, uh, uh, around the genocide that's been perpetuated against African people in solidarity with oppressed peoples around the world. And uh, so this is why they attacked me. There are various kinds of things happening in the world today that brought all of this stuff to a head, uh, where uh, the United States is uh, one of the, the whole colonial system is fighting for its very life. The colonial system as it exists right now, as you can see, you can't uh, go online, you can't look at a newspaper or see anything on TV where the system is not fighting for its very life. It's murdering people all around the world. It used to be a time where this colonial power uh, showed its strength uh, at grabbing up land and territories and peoples, et cetera. This was an example of power and strength. And now what's happening is it's murdering people, uh, not as an example of strength, but trying to hold on to everything is stolen. Uh, and even to the point of the threat of nuclear war. So that you can't criticize what they're doing, like uh, uh, this, this brutal, murderous uh, war that they have created in Ukraine, killing Ukrainians, killing Russians, you know, et cetera. And you can't make any kind of criticisms of that, and you certainly can't criticize what they have done and do to African people. And this is one of the reasons they attacked us. As quiet as it's kept, yeah, they didn't want us to say anything about the Ukrainian issue, but they don't want us to talk about African and African people. They don't even want us to use the electoral process uh, to be able to say that we don't want any more gentrification, just be able to say that uh, reparations, put it on the ballot like we did in St. Petersburg, Florida. Uh, they don't want us to, to be able uh, to campaign against genocide and to talk about taking the United States to uh, the world court, just like Israel was taken by South Africa to the world court uh, charging, being charged with genocide because of what they're doing to Palestinian people like uh, there. They don't want us to have this kind of communications and they don't want us to be able to criticize the historic relationship that we have with white power and with this country. And when I say this country, I mean the United States. And I think that uh, even when they put us on trial, this, the, the laws that they have created to try us with are the laws, uh, colonial laws. Uh, they put Nat Turner on trial. Uh, if people don't know, in 1831, Nat Turner led this incredible re rebellion uh, uh, there in Virginia, and they and they captured him and uh, they put him on trial, and and they uh, convicted him and and killed him as a consequence of that. So they don't want any criticism. They don't want Nat Turner to be remembered. They don't want us to talk about Nat Turner or to talk about Denmark Vesey or to talk about the Haitian Revolution. They don't want any of that stuff. They want us to be perceived around the world as this very silent uh, uh, people satisfied with our lot. Again, they would bestialize us uh, and and we are a people who are, who are beastly and without history. So they take us to trial and in trial they fixed the, the, the trial is fixed uh, to the point that I can't say they don't want us to be able to say that this stuff that we're talking about, We've been fighting for this stuff, you know, uh, from the existence of the party more than 50 years ago. Uh, they don't want to say that in the 82 years that I've been alive, I can recount all of the murder and brutality that's imposed on African people here and around the world. So that is something that if we're going to have a real struggle to try to even introduce that discussion uh, into a court proceeding. They want to be able to uh, continue this lie that Black people were created by white people. Uh, that's why, you know, we are hyphenated human beings. We are Afro-Americans now. We used to be just dirty words, et cetera, and now they've come up with a, a cleaner, dirty word. So we are Afro-Americans, African-Americans, that hyphen, they, they make us a, a, a product of America, of what they call America. Of course, America itself is a foreign name that's imposed on indigenous land, a white man named America. So this is, this is the kind of contradiction that we are faced with. And this is why it's so important that we do everything. And you must help us to get the word out as widely as possible. We have to enter this discussion. We have to enter this discussion in a very relentless way uh, so that uh, we tell the world we are here. We are going to be free. We will not be silenced. 
flesh bang grenades, lynchings, and murders that you've committed against us will not silence us. We are going to be able to say what America and what Europe and the whole colonial mode of production has done continues to do to African oppressed people around the world. Look at you got a situation where Leonard Peltier, a so-called Indian, a native man, uh, been locked up for almost 50 years in this country uh, uh, for uh, defending the indigenous people when the United States government sent in military forces to, to oppress the people uh, on one of these reservations. And, and he, he is locked up in prison now, like they're trying to put us in prison, the colonized people. This is the foundation upon which everything America and Europe brags about. It's based on the foundation of enslavement of African people, the colonization of the peoples of the world. And we're not going to be like that. We're not going to live like that anymore. We're going to break out of this relationship. And that's what you're doing when you make these contributions. Black Power uh, 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 96 uh, 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 dot org. Black Power 96 dot org. Three. Blackpower96.org slash donate slash donate. Mm -hmm. So uh I want to thank the brother, who is that brother Charles or Brother David? That's prop uh Brother Charles. Brother Charles, thank you, comrade. And and uh yeah. Yes. Thank everybody who's donating, and I hope everybody will continue to do that. Yes, yes. And it seems, Chairman, that you know, forces right here, they want to break out of this relationship, they want to end this relationship that you just described, uh, Comrade Allison um, in St. Louis, Missouri with $20 today, uh, Huru Comrade Ali. We have Comrade Paul in Frederick, Maryland with $25 and who says, in my opinion, it is important for a community to have um, um, to ha for a community to have uh, something like Black Power 96. I am not in the St. Petersburg area, but I know Black Power 96 Radio is an excellent station and I'm sure it serves the community well. So thank you, uh, Comrade Paul, for your contribution. We have Comrade Angelica in St. Louis with $40, says Uhuru Sasa, Uhuru, Comrade Angelica. And we have APEDF I'm President. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Angelica, <laughs> that's <Yeah. a> good. <laughs> Uh, and we have a contribution from APEDF President Ona Zene Ishitela with $300. Uhuru President Ona Zene Ishitela, thank you so much for your contribution. Always, always contributing to Black Print 96 every single fund drive, um, deepening support for this station for APDF Sister Project. Um, and just really, really salute you, salute your profound leadership, and really thank you for your contribution tonight. And Comrade MQ has not stopped, Chairman. Mm. Um, another $25, mm. totaling $405. Mm. $405 tonight from Comrade. I didn't know there was that much money in Gainesville. <laughs> I, think, I think MQ's dumping it all to Black Power yeah. 96. Uh -huh. Right on, Comrade MQ. We salute you. We thank you so much for your contributions. And um, I know that you have inspired a lot of people on this call today, <laughs> um, you know, who have made contributions as well. And um, let me see. I just want to make, I think I see another another donation coming in from um, from uh, President Ona Zane. Another $100. Uhuru. Uhuru, Deputy Chair. Um, yeah, we just want to make sure we're getting this right. Okay, right on. Um, and I believe, oh, we have a message coming in from President Ona Zane Shetela. So we'll uh, wait a moment uh, to 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 read that message. Um, oh, in memory of Octavius um, Clark, and want to say long live Octavius, uh, Deputy Chair's son, and appreciate your contribution. You know, on his behalf. Thank you, President Ona Zane Shetela. Um, yes, so, so much, uh, just a profound honor. Um, and, and chairman, now we have raised $2,640. We have exceeded the goal by $640 today. And it looks like, uh, more is coming in. Hmm? Um, yeah, we'll see. Well, it looks like some more is coming in, but, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and start to move to close, uh, chairman. And again, just really, really appreciate 
uh, just not just, um, you know, all of the support that we're getting in from Black Crown 86 uh, to Black Crown 86, which, again, want to encourage people all throughout the month of February. We're trying to raise $10,000. So please continue making contributions. Support your favorite uh, show, Amali Taught Me, um, you know, in the process, but also for, you know, your presence here, Chairman, your leadership. And, you know, again, the incredible presentation that you just laid out you know, really deepening our commitment and understanding of, you know, why we have to do everything we can to support and put out the campaign of the Uhuru 3, the case of the Uhuru 3 and the hands off Uhuru campaign and to defend anti-colonial free speech, to fight for our right to criticize colonialism, to organize against colonialism and for people to hear um, uh, about a world that's possible outside of colonialism and a colonial mode of production. So um, uh, thank you, Chairman. And and at this time, you know, just want to see if there's any closing remarks before we officially wrap up. Uhuru, I want to express appreciation uh, to uh, comrades uh, Penny Hess and Jesse Neville uh, of the Uhuru Three and the Uhuru Solidarity Movement itself. Uh, the fact is that uh, they were attacked uh, uh, as a part of an attack on the, on, on the right of uh, people, African people, to engage in anti-colonial expressions. In fact, uh, they represent uh, in 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 the in the world today uh, uh, black power in white face. It's an anti-colonial struggle that more, and which is one of the reasons they don't want people to hear us because we are convinced that we can win um, huge sectors of the colonizer population. Uh, to unity, uh, to be able to reclaim their own humanity and join the masses of people around the world who want an end to oppression, and exploitation, and slavery, and slave masters, and things like that. So uh, just want to thank everybody, and I do hope that people will continue to make contributions beyond uh, uh, this show, and uh, let's make uh, BlackPower96.org a major uh, uh, feature uh, in the struggle of the peoples around the world. It already is a major feature, but that's enhanced that. So thank you so much. Thank you, Comrade Akile. Thank uh, the station manager, uh, Comrade Brother Eddie, uh, who tries to convince people that he's blind, but he sees better than most people that we know. So uh, thank you, and thank uh, Comrade Deputy Chair Onazin, thank Comrade uh, President Onazine Ishatola for uh, the leadership she provides uh, through uh, African People's Education and Defense Fund uh, for this amazing project that we are par participating with now. Thank everybody, Uhuru. Uhuru, Uhuru, comrade, I, uh, chairman, I want to echo those sentiments and um, want to make a correction. The $300 uh, earlier was um, from APEDF and the $100 is um, from uh, personally from President Onazene and from you, chairman. So thank you so much uh, for your contribution as well. And um, want to recognize some in-person donations that we receive um, also from um, Elaine, um, Al Dogan's uh, wife. Right on. Yes. Yes. Sister Elaine with $25 in memory of Comrade Al Dogan. I know. With Comrade Al. And also um, a contribution from Pop Lancaster of $100. Long time. Long yes. time. Yes. Supporter and member of this movement. Pop, Pop got to get us that tape from that uh, 1977 mobilization in Atlanta, Georgia, of uh, the Free Desert Woods. Pop. Yes, Pop. <laughs> when we need it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Uhuru, and thank you, everybody, uh, for your contributions today. Just want to shout out, um, you know, we normally don't do this, but I want to just give a special shout out to MQ, who kept up in her game up in that. Hey, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, through throughout this whole process. So yeah. salute to MQ and to all of our donors who, um, with your support, we've raised $2,665, exceeding our goal by $665 tonight. And again, reminder, we have $10,000 to raise by the end of February. So don't stop contributing. Share this with your friends, family, comrades. Make sure they know about this incredible radio station and how they can support it as well. So uh, salute this incredible discussion. I want to thank the O'Malley Taught Me show team for helping with the production, the promotions, the AV, and the chat moderation. And want to thank all of you for tuning in to today's special study. Whether you are watching on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, or Twitter, we are glad to have have you on with us and I want to of course salute the brilliant leadership of Chairman Omalia Shatella. Make sure to follow the chairman on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Twitch, and Instagram and subscribe to the Burning Spirit TV on YouTube to catch every episode of the Omali Taught Me Study and our Omali Taught Me Sunday Studies 
will return in April of this year. Please continue to share the best of Amali Taught Me series on YouTube, and we look forward to rejoining you live at our regular time, Sundays at 10 a.m. to 12 noon Eastern, comrades. So with that being said, donate, donate, donate to blackpower96.org slash donate. Cash up us, dollar sign, Black Power 96. Mail us a check to Black Power 96, 1245 18th Avenue South, St. Petersburg, Florida. Comrades, it's been a splendid evening. Thank you so much, Chairman. Uhuru, we will win. We are winning. Drop the charges now. Defend anti-colonial free speech. Uhuru, comrade.